Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and today Apple released iOS 18 beta 7. iOS 18 beta 7 is out to developers. iOS 18 public beta 5 will either be out by the time you're watching this video or sometime tomorrow. This particular update came in at 850.6 megabytes on my iPhone 15 pro and was about the same size on the other devices that it was released on as well. Apple also released iPad OS 18 beta seven, watch OS 11 beta seven, along with Mac OS 15 beta seven, TV OS 18 and HomePod OS 18 beta seven and vision OS two beta seven. They did not release iOS 18.1 beta three. We'll talk about when to expect that a little bit later. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the build number and talk about what's new. So we'll go to settings, then general, then about, as you can see, the build number is 22A5346A. We're finally at the letter A, meaning we're getting very close to a final version of this. This particular update brings refinements and should be feature complete. Now, as far as new features, there is no modem update coming from beta six to beta seven. So no changes there, but as far as new features, if we go into the control center, scroll down, press and hold, add a control, and then scroll down a little ways here, keep going all the way to sounds. I actually have a silent mode icon where I don't have that in beta five or beta six. It's only in beta seven for me. Let me know if you're seeing the same thing. The phone app is the same as before. So if we go into the phone app, Apple sadly did not bring back the icons that go down the right hand side. You only get those if you search. So if you're searching for something such as Apple, any of the calls that you'll see, you'll have that icon, but they didn't bring it back to the recents page. Hopefully they bring that back in the next beta. The other thing they haven't changed has to do with the keyboard within the keyboard. If we go to the emoji icons, you'll see here that we have frequently used that's working again, but we don't have the larger style icons anymore. So they haven't brought those back and you can sort of layer these, but you don't get the larger style where they were here altogether. It's been brought back to what we had basically with iOS 17. Now, anything else that's new? Well, not a whole lot here, just a bunch of refinements and splash screens. If we go into our photos here, I took a bunch of screenshots. So we have a splash screen for what's new in home. We have one for voice memos. I also had one for translate. We have one for fitness, also notes, as well as the password app and journal as well. So all of those have new splash screens. There's also a couple of other things I wanted to make you aware of before we talk about some notable bug fixes and remaining bugs within the app store, Apple actually updated Apple sports yesterday. They added NFL with the latest season. You'll see college football is back and catch up on team stats, box scores, and lineups. If you go into the app itself, go into my leagues, you can select NFL now and see all of the upcoming games and then add your favorite team. So this is something they've updated. They've also updated the podcast app so that it works on the web. So that won't actually show up on your iPhone or iPad, but you'll now have full web access to the podcast app. And I'll link that in the description. If you want to check it out, it works now on a Mac or windows computer, just place it in your favorite browser, Linux as well, whatever you're on, and you should be able to use it. As far as notable bug fixes this time around, well, good news. If you're using a multilingual keyboard that seems to be working properly now. So within our keyboards, if maybe we add Spanish, you'll see, we can add Spanish for whichever region we're in, and then we can add it to the English keyboard or add a new keyboard. We'll add it to the English keyboard press done, go into our messages and back in messages. I get a new splash screen here. Some people saw this before, but it says type English and Spanish. So you'll see it says type both languages on the same keyboard. We'll tap continue and you'll see you have the little indicator here. This wasn't working properly before we could say hello and Hola. And it actually recognizes it and won't auto correct it. So you can go back and forth between whatever language you'd like, as long as it's supported here. And you'll see that on the space bar. Now, if we're on the home screen and maybe we're customizing the home screen, we go to edit and then customize. If you have the clock widget, it actually now tints properly. So if you're using the tinting option, you want to switch between your icons. Everything seems to work as intended. So if you want to switch between any colors here, you have great contrast and you can actually use it. If we go back to dark, switch it back to light mode for the wallpaper. This definitely feels more refined. It's not perfect, but they've definitely resolved some issues with it. Fitness seems to work properly for those that were having issues. So we'll go past the splash screen here. So within fitness, if you actually have fitness goals set, those are working properly. Now it seems, and the control center bug seems to be fixed mostly for most people, meaning that if you reboot the icons and the overall setup that you have don't disappear. 
They stay as you actually left them. Some people did say that the mirror icon, if you reboot, it will reappear. If you delete it, I wasn't able to duplicate that. And I'm seeing from most people that it seems that the overall control center bugs are fixed. If you're trying to add a new wallpaper and we scroll down, it takes a while to populate some of these. And again, the iPhone 15 pro wallpapers are missing. Hopefully they'll bring this back with the final versions, probably as we get closer to the final release as they haven't placed the wallpapers in spots where they typically would. So if we get out of this, we go back and then maybe we go into settings and then we go to display and brightness. You'll see they haven't changed the wallpaper to iOS 18 here yet either. So they'll probably wait until the end to do that. Also, I'm having an issue with the tips app. So if we go into tips here, if we go into it for me, it just sits here and loads. I've tried to close out of it, tried to restart it. It will just sit here and you have the little pinwheel icon. So for whatever reason, it's not working at all for me. And this is on multiple devices. Let me know if it's working for you. The last thing I'm hearing from people is some people's SIM card disappeared and stopped working, but then later restarted on its own, but it took a while. So if you're having an eSIM with issues, this was actually a carrier in India. If you're having an issue with that, try again, maybe reboot or turn off cellular, turn it back on. It did seem to work eventually, but initially it wasn't working properly on one of their two SIM cards. If we go into the feedback app, the release notes aren't showing properly for iOS and iPad OS 18 beta six, but they are for everything else. But if we go to the public facing website, they've updated it here and the title is updated, but there's nothing new in here. I actually compared it with the beta six release notes. And so far I haven't seen any difference whatsoever. It's all the same notes. So maybe they're still updating this, but at the time of this video, nothing has changed here. Now I did want to mention the upcoming Apple event. Someone leaked what looked to be maybe a somewhat real version of the invite, but Apple doesn't seemingly leak those early. And that's definitely not the real one. However, the date might be correct. And the overall date for that, if we go into the calendar here is probably going to be on the 9th or 10th of September. We should see the invites probably sometime next week, and then we'll have that event either in the first or second week of September, usually around the second week, and then we'll get to the final releases of iOS 18. So I'm expecting iOS 18 beta eight, and then in RC, we'll probably have another beta we did last year. I would expect the same thing. And this year, Mark Gurman actually said that it looks like with beta seven, everything is feature complete mostly. So if we take a look at X, you'll see that he retweeted my tweet about what's out and the latest iOS 18 seed I'm told is final other than features tied to the new hardware, meaning iPhone 16 or anything else they actually announced. So it looks like Apple's going to probably lock everything everything down here and now work on refinements with overall bugs. But I do expect a beta eight sometime next week, Monday or Tuesday. And I also expect an RC probably the following week, maybe the first or second week of September with a final release of iOS 18, probably along the 16th. We could see it a little earlier than that, but that's what I'm expecting right now. Also iOS 18.1 beta three, I would expect next week at this point, typically with the first three to four betas, we're on a bi-weekly schedule. So that's typically what Apple does. I would not expect iOS 17.7 .7 until September and iOS 17.6.2 could be sometime this week or next week, even though we had an iOS 17.6.1 re-release yesterday. Lots of strange things going on with that. As far as the overall benchmarks, well, I did run them initially on this device. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. And you'll see we had 2,817 for single core, 6,874 for multi-core. This is actually an improvement after the previous beta ran for a week or so. It's definitely an improvement in single and multi-core for me. So this is looking good so far. And that leads me to performance. It seems to be performing well. And just in general, things like ProMotion are super smooth, just, Animations are really nice. And I think this is going to be more of a refinement update. It will get better. Of course, as we get closer to a final release. Also the overall heat has been pretty good on iOS 18 beta seven. So far it cools down nice and quickly, even after charging. And I charged it for a little while as it was low and then ran those benchmarks. So it definitely seems to be improved when it comes to battery life. Well, that will take days to know that for sure. And we'll talk about that in the weekend follow-up video, typically on Saturday. So if we go ahead and take a look at battery, this device is not my main device, but maybe I'll use it this week. And within battery health, you'll see it only has 20 cycles with 100% capacity. Now compared to my main device that I use all the time, I have 284 cycles with 92% maximum capacity. It's running iOS 18.1 beta two, and the battery life is pretty terrible overall. I have to plug it in before I go to bed. And I only had three hours and 31 minutes 
minutes of screen active time yesterday. So hopefully iOS 18 betas are much more refined. I'm hearing they are a little bit better so far, but we'll have to wait and see and see what it's like on the weekend. So we don't really know until we use it for a few days, but let me know your overall experience. And if you've found any additional features in iOS 18 beta seven, I'd love to hear from you in the comments. And of course I'll link this wallpaper in the description. Like I normally do. If you haven't subscribed already though, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like as always. Thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.